Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Zero Space in Microsoft Flight Sim. If you haven't stopped in the sim recently or don't keep rapt attention to the news regarding Microsoft Flight Sim, you might not have noticed that there is a free plane available and it is available in the marketplace. It is a Ford Tri-Motor available until June 30th, after which it will be $15 unless you have the deluxe or premium packs, in which case it will be $10. And I've already claimed it, so it's not going to show up for me here, but it's a normal Asobo plane like these and uh, price the same. And you should certainly claim it for free while you can. But as far as whether you want to install it or not, well, that depends on what you think about its functionality, and I am going to test fly it so you can judge for yourself, but I think there are some significant caveats with it. It is 3.75 gigabytes on your drive, and it says when you install it that it needs much more than that, but that's probably just uh, the install process. Uh, 3.75 gigabytes is what it actually takes up, and there are three variants, the regular, the floats, and the skis. And it is a fairly slow plane. It's sort of in the same vein as the Fokker F7. And livery-wise, there are a variety of them, five. And we are going to try it out in its hometown of Detroit. So without further ado, I'm just going to try out the wheeled version. Okay, so the first sort of uh, caveat the first issue you will notice right away, and no, you don't have to adjust your speakers, is that it's really quiet in here. Too quiet. And I don't know what to do about it. Of course we can throttle up. I mean, the engines are running though, and they should be much louder than this. <laughs> and they are not. It is a rainy day here in Detroit, but outside, Outside they apparently make some sound, but not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Everything looks good. The interior looks very nice, and we can see a bit of the cabin back there, and I'm sure they've modeled all of that. As far as the cameras are concerned, got... Oh, uh, yes, that's very interesting. Um, we go over here, we can see that the engine dials are actually on those struts there connected to the engine. That's an interesting feature. And same for the right engine there. And then we have, this is an interesting view down here. I wonder why it's so low. But these are just the control number views. And this is it throttled all the way up. Um, yeah. Three radial engines. Now, these are the same engines, as far as I know, as the ones on the Fokker F7. I don't think the Fokker F7 sounded like this, though. So, that is perplexing. Maybe they figure that the Ford Tribe motor was much, much quieter. I mean, it had better sound dampening in the cockpit. I don't know. I'll try and turn it up in editing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very quiet right now. It looks good though. Exterior and interior look great. It, the sound is an issue and the the handling, it just doesn't feel like a vintage aircraft very much. It feels very easy to fly. Obviously with its huge wing it gets off the ground very easily and is probably good for bush missions, so the floats and the skis are sort of a nifty addition, and flying it around Alaska in particular might be interesting. So just from this view we can look over and... Oh! I overstressed it. Uh, it overstressed at 114 knots indicated, so it can't go faster than that. So, it occurred to me that I had a plane that used a bright whirlwind, and it is the Spirit of St. Louis, as you can see here. Now, it is a right whirlwind J5, not a J6. The J6 is what's on the Ford Tri-Motor and the Fokker 
F7, and it's only one of them, but this is what it sounds like inside. And mind you, uh, we're not like right up against the engine. There's a whole fuel tank between the cockpit and the engine in front of the pilot, Charles Lindbergh. Uh, there was the fuel tank, which is why they don't have a forward window, and he had to use a periscope, right? So there's a substantial buffer between him and the engine. But that's what it sounds like in there. It's still fairly quiet out here. But that's a more convincing sound, I think. Also, the weathering on the instruments on the Spirit of St. Louis is a nice touch. It gives a better feel to things. Of course, this looks very steampunk in general. This is a very well done cockpit. But anyway, back to the Ford Trimotor. Okay, well, I'm just gonna take it around and make a circuit of the airport and come back in. It's certainly no problem to fly. That is sort of part of the problem. It's not super interesting to fly. With all these vintage planes though, it occurs to me that maybe I should fly a vintage only flight around the world kind of thing. It'll take some time though. These, uh, these planes don't go very quickly. At 100 knots, that's more than 200 hours. I mean, I do like the detail, and, you know, it flies well. Okay, I know. I've got to turn back to the airport, and we're going to see whether I can land it. This will be my first attempted landing with it. Unfortunately, I don't currently have the Fokker F7 installed. I have it, but I don't have it installed because it's a rather large aircraft uh, in terms of disk size. So I tempor temporarily removed it, and I'll reconsider that. I do want to sort of compare it to this, since, again, they're the same engines. And I just forget whether it sounds like this. I, I think I would have been very surprised if it sounded like this. Now, as with all these tail draggers, I'm probably got bounce a few times. Oh, I guess I'm firmly on the ground, actually, it looks like. I... Yep, uh, probably the easiest tail dragger landing I've made. Yep, yep, no problems. Yeah, flying it was a breeze. Taxiing is also actually quite easy. Alright, so as I taxi along, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.